Today's video is sponsored by War Thunder. Let's begin. Guys, running out of runes is no more, at least for me. A revolutionary update came out recently for making runes. The update I'm referring to is the Scar Essence Mine. The Scar was a new area that was added with the release of Desert Treasure 2. Shortly after Desert Treasure 2, Jagex expanded the Scar with another area called the Scar Essence Mine. This new area lets you mine a new resource called Tainted Essence from Amalgamations. You can turn these Tainted Essence into several types of extracts using the extractor for a hefty gold fee. Finally, with the extracts, you can bring them with you while you do your normal runecrafting, such as Abyss runecrafting and Zaya runecrafting. For every essence crafted, you will use one extract as well, and each extract will give you an additional 60 of the same runes that you just made. For example, if you use one pair of essence at the blood altar, you would actually get 61 blood runes instead. This allows players to runecraft runes effectively 60 times faster than normal runecrafting. The cost of making extracts is extra expensive though, so this update mainly helps high level Ironmans with extra GP, like me. Normal players can get runes cheaper in the GE and faster, so definitely better off sticking to the GE. This is a massive update for me as I have accumulated tons of gold, like hundreds of mils of gold, and god knows how many hundreds of mils of aux over the years that I have. I probably have like a bill worth of GP in my bank. All that GP has been collecting dust for years until now. <laughs> oh my god. I actually do have like a bill in just aux. In the past, I had to runecraft them slowly at Zaya or buy them at shops, which involved a lot of world hopping, competition with other players, and was overall annoying. But now I can just make blood runes and soul runes faster according to Jagex, and most likely less annoying by doing runecrafting alongside the extracts. For example, I've heard of raids going as crazy as 300k blood runes an hour using the scar extracts while runecrafting bloods, which will absolutely be the fastest way to get blood runes outside of course using GE. Maintaining bloods and soul runes is super important as the scythe and the shadow, two of the most powerful and useful weapons for me, eats those runes up. A faster method and more chill method acquiring runes will allow me to use these weapons more often. I would like to invest 300 mil GP into scar extracts to see how many runes, particularly souls and bloods I can get and how fast it is. Hopefully I can integrate this into my rune gathering routine to massively reduce prep time. For that scythe and shadow. I will also cover some other progress like new com achievements and new collection lot progress. Before I rush investing 200 mil into the scar extracts, I want to make sure I understand how the extracts work. And so I'll start off with a humble 10 mil GP and I will be making a lower tier scar extract called twisted extract. These can make runes like chaos runes. So we'll mess with that first. 10 mil GP will get me 1,666 Twisted Extracts, which will be converted into 100k Chaos Runes. I want to make some Chaos Runes anyways, since I'm going to need those for my Shadow. So this is a good first test. So here were the results of the test and all the important stuff I learned along the way. Turns out you can mine this card Essence super fast. I got the Essence for 10 mils worth of Twisted Extracts in a matter of minutes. In about 30 minutes, I managed to use up all of my Twisted Extracts, Runecrafting, Chaos Runes at the Abyss. And that means any rune that you Runecraft at the Abyss with Extracts, you can make anywhere from 200 to 300,000 runes an hour. I would not recommend using Extracts via the Abyss on most low to mid level runes as it is actually slower than buying them from a store and some runes are actually cheaper through the store. For example, buying Chaos Runes from a shop is actually many times faster than runecrafting even with the extracts. I tested AFK opening Chaos Rune packs and it was still about 300k runes an hour. However, a commonly needed high level rune like Death Runes is actually worth using extracts. You can make anywhere from two to 300,000 deaths an hour with extracts through the Abyss. The extracts for Death Runes are called Mango Extracts costing 200 GP each. Death Runes at shops don't have packs and only stocks 250 at a time, so acquiring deaths is actually a lot slower via shops. So this does mean that Scar Extracts should easily benefit me when it comes to getting high level runes because it should be faster and easier than buying from shops. Also, I learned that Rune Crafting Outfit does not interact with the Extracts to get that 60% rune boost. Of course, 
it would be way too broken if that worked. However, the outfit still works as normal on the normal essence you craft. Blood essence also does not work with extracts, but will work as normal. Regarding the Abyss runecrafting, souls and rats are not accessible through the Abyss method, and also blood altar can be accessed actually quicker through a different method than the Abyss, so these particular runes will have to be made in different ways. After this test at the Abyss with the cheaper extracts, I am now confident I can invest 300 mil on scar extracts to make soul runes and blood runes. Let's do it. The type of extract I need for blood and soul runes are the highest tier ones called the scar extract. Converting one scar essence chunk into one scar extract costs 24,000 GP. So with 300 million GP, I need to get 12,500 essence chunks. I managed to mine that many in only half an hour. Then I simply use the extractor to convert those 12,500 essence chunks into 12,000 500 scar extracts which cost me 300 mil. That's 750,000 high level runes I can make super quickly when I go runecrafting. You might be asking why 300 mil, that's pretty much all the actual GP I had and I don't want to ALK at the moment. Just how fast can I turn 12,500 scar extracts into blood and soul runes? Let's find out. So soul runes can't be done using the abyss, at the moment soul runes can only be crafted via the Sayer Altar method. This method requires mining dark essence blocks and using crushed dark essence to make soul runes at the Zaya soul altar, which means the overall yield of rune per hour is not going to be nearly as good as abyss rune crafting. The extracts are luckily compatible with this method, so I can still gain 60 times more runes than what I would normally make at Zaya rune crafting. I mainly want soul runes since I will use the shell the most versus something like the scythe. I decided to invest about 80% of the scar extracts to soul runes. What I love about this method is that it's mostly AFK. Since it's chill as hell, I can relax and work on other stuff, IRL. I was making around 90 to 100,000 soul runes an hour with the extracts. Neat little trick if you have GPU setting on on rune light, you can expand your draw distance so that you can actually reach the soul altar with a left click super far away like what I'm doing right now, making this method even more AFK. While I go ahead and AFK RuneCraft, I want to show you guys a really fun game from today's sponsor. All these tough grinds like prepping for resources like runes has taught me one thing. And that is to take breaks and play other games that are instantly satisfying and fun like War Thunder. War Thunder is a unique game that lets players battle in various combat scenarios with vehicles like tanks, planes, ships, and even helicopters. There's thousands of vehicles to choose from such as armored cars from the 1920s all the way to fighter jets of today. The meticulous details of the vehicles, realistic sound effects, and graphics gives you a satisfactory sense of what it's like to handle one of these powerful machines in battle. Each vehicle is carefully created so that each major component like the engines, the fuel tanks, weapons, and so on can be affected to various degrees during battle. The game also offers x-ray views so you can see exactly where damage is being taken, so you can learn and adapt. War Thunder also offers three different modes so that players can experience battle scenarios that best suits them. I love the arcade mode because it is fast paced and the game physics and mechanics are simpler so a newbie pilot like me can still contribute to battle and have a great time. War Thunder is free to play and available on PC, Xbox, and PlayStation. Now it is a great time to check out War Thunder using my link in the description. New and returning players that have not played for 6 months will get limited time, bonus pack containing multiple premium vehicles, exclusive vehicle decorator, Eagle Valor, 100,000 Silver Lions, and 7 days of premium account. Join 70 million other players and experience the unique and epic throw of combat vehicle battles in War Thunder. I made around 600,000 soul runes in only 7 hours. That's absolutely awesome. Buying souls is definitely still a valid option as it is possible to get a bit more than that, but the annoying world hopping and competing with other iron players is definitely going to be a hard pass for me. I just absolutely love AFK. I will 100% be using the scar extracts as they alter to make soul runes going forward. 600,000 soul runes should last a super long time as that is 300,000 shots with the shadow. I will be spamming my shadow without worries going forward. Now let's talk about blood runes. I have 150k scar extracts left. I decided to use that to make blood runes. 
The ideal blood room crafting method is the Mire Q tunnel method as it is safer and faster with the best setup. This requires things like fairy rings and 93 agility for the best shortcut. Additionally, I can bring the blood essence and rune crafting outfit to boost my blood runes made with the pure essence. Quick tip, using menu entry swapper to make the filling and emptying pouches a left click and teleporting items a left click makes rune crafting so much nicer. I managed to use my 150,000 remaining scar extracts in around half an hour for a bonus 150,000 blood runes. This means if I did a full hour, that's like 300,000 blood runes easy. This is so crazy because it's over twice as fast as buying from a shop. This is absolutely the way to get blood runes as an Iron Man. I would not bother with the same method this time since it's three times faster than that as well. Going forward, normal blood rune crafting with extracts is definitely the way to go for blood runes for me. I also highly recommend this blood rune method for any end game irons. I won't feel bad about spamming my scythe at more bosses as blood runes are so fast to get now and scythe only uses two blood runes now per hit instead of three. That's crazy. Can you believe that? I had 340 mil GP less than 24 hours ago. And now I only have 40 mil GP. And in return, I made basically 600k soul runes and 160k blood runes. And some of this is just from like normal parasites and, you know, dense essence, of course. But like, yeah, in less than 24 hours, 300 mil later. Holy moly, that's crazy. Uh, for Iron Man's, you definitely have to <laughs> spend way more than the normal price in GE, right? Normal account, you can buy this for 200 each, whereas I have to spend twice that, basically, 400 GP each. But crazy, though, I, I have never made this many maroons in, in one day or in a month, even. Well, that justifies me actually alking stuff for once. It, it's been years since I feel like I have to out stuff, so... If I ever run out of these runes, which I don't think so for a long time, I'll out these. After my extensive 300 mil adventure using Scar Extracts, I can confidently tell you which runes are worth making with the Extracts. As far as commonly needed runes go for irons, it is worth using Extracts to make Death Runes, Blood Runes, and Soul Runes. Side note, you can make a lot of Wrath Runes too with Extracts if you want to speed up that process, although at the moment, you don't really use Wrath Runes too much. Let's, uh... Charge some stuff. Yeah, Shadow, I should definitely just... Charge it up real quick. Um... Where's my Soul Runes? Alright. Alright, Coliseum is using up so many, uh... Runes. For the Shadow, and... The Blood Runes. Yeah, good thing I freaking prepped using the good old, or not good old, but the brand spanking new scar method assisted runecrafting but the extracts, yep alright, uh, let's just do 300, how much, how much blood runes is that? 50k, god damn but it's worth I'm gonna charge this all the way to full there we go, oh, it feels nice though I still use so much less blood runes now a few moments later Damn, boys! Man, time to blow through some freaking soul runes, man. Because the Colosseum grind made me use probably 15,000 charges already. But yeah, we're gonna bump it back up to 15,000. But I still have so many soul runes left, so it's fine. We can tank this charges like crazy and it'll be fine. The time saved on my PVM goals are going to be massive. We're talking tens, no, even hundreds of hours. Save prepping runes and using my best weapons more often. Speaking about using my best weapons, let's use them at the new combat achievement tasks. So new combat achievements came out for Desert Treasure 2 bosses and the spooky rat boss, Scurious. As you might have seen last video with the Sarah grind, I put off reobtaining Grandmaster achievements till I got the Sarah Hilt and Greenlock Sarah. So it is time to work on these new CAs and get back that GM and the perks. I started off with Scurrius and I got that done in like 5 minutes so now we move on to Desert Treasure 2. I saved a ton of time doing these tasks because there were 4 GM tasks to kill each awakened version of the Desert Treasure 2 bosses but luckily I already have the KC for them as I did the Blood Torva challenge a while ago which involves killing the same bosses. There were still a few Grandmaster tasks that were notably challenging so we will cover mostly those in detail. 
So I start off with the Fedora's task. I went ahead and I did the perfect task. The task involves killing five Fedoras perfectly in a trip. You don't actually have to do them perfectly in a row. This applies to the other three perfect tasks for the other bosses. Honestly, pretty easy task. I've done over 3,000 Fedoras for the pet. Yeah, perfect Fedoras. I don't think you have to do five in a row, but I did five in a row, so. Looks like I still got it. Yeet. It's under two bell setup, so DDS for spec and Sarasaur for the main hand. And uh, yeah, I think we are good to go. All right, this this is uh, done nice, All right? Two mil setup. Yes. Oh, I got a wicked or for that too. Dang, that wasn't too bad. Yeah, that wasn't too bad. Okay, nice. Next task. All right. The difficult tasks were the two GM tasks called the GM speed run and the Axe Enthusiast task. The GM speed run task would be hard, but I've already spent run this boss recently for fun, as I got a really rare Slayer task for it last episode. This means I already knew how to speed run it well. Simply, I waited for a CZB natural ruby on the first hit, and then I clawed and I used the Soul Reaper and Scythe for the rest of the fight. It only took me a few tries because I got lucky on the hits. Holy shit. To be honest, I think we got this already. Oh, double zero with the scythe. Mother trucker, are you kidding me? Oh, we got it. Yeah, 49 seconds. <laughs> okay, well, that was fast. Axe Enthusiast, though, is definitely the most difficult for me as you have to stand in the middle during the enrage phase for three minutes straight and you cannot leave the middle at all during that time or you fail. And then you kill the boss. It's really hard to skip axes in the middle, so I brought some tanky ass gear and tried my best to dodge and eat for three minutes straight. I came up with a clever idea to use the Staff of Light special, which is also Staff of the Dead, because it reduces all melee damage by half for one minute, including axe damage. This spec helped save me a lot of damage and made it a lot easier to survive. Also, I can confirm you can complete the task even if you die as the boss dies at the same time, because that's what happened to me. Ah, I might die. Wait, I killed the adult. <laughs> did it count? Oh, I did it! <laughs> Didn't have to use this this year, but we double death and uh, we got the task done. Nice. Next, we move to Duke Succulus. I've been recently grinding that boss for a pet and feel comfortable. The two hard tasks outside of the Awakened task are the GM speed run and the Mirror Image task. The Mirror Image task was tricky because you can only attack Duke at the same time as Duke attacks you. So there was one trick I realized to make this task a lot easier. I realized that I didn't need to hit every single time Duke hits. The task requirement is more so if you're going to attack the boss, it has to be at the same time he does, not at the same time every time. So this means I can take my sweet time to time my hits. For example, I wait for the Duke to attack me first. Then I can prepare for his next attack and time my attack to the second hit. Every time Duke throws gas vents or ice barrage attacks, I simply just dodge and wait for him to do his regular attack, and then prepare my attack for his next regular attack. So once you know that trick, it's a lot easier. As I just know, first 80% you can scythe or use a fire take weapon. If you match it the first time, you can keep it going until it does a, another one of those specials. And then art light for the last bit, because it's the same attack speed, so but yeah, it worked out. The speedrun task involves using vengeance to purposely tank two hits, and hoping your BGS lands so your scythe can go ham and you want to mix it in with that dragon claw spec. Also, you can only do the speedrun attempt on the second kill as the first kill prep time is too slow. This is annoying since it takes a while before you can even attempt the speedrun. You also want to learn how to use the 40 mushroom powder prep to wake him up as that is faster than making the vials. Luckily, the prep method I normally do is also that strategy so I didn't have to practice that. This task took a bit to pull out but I can also confirm that you can get this task on a double death. I think I got the time anyways. I got it. I got it. I got it! But I lost a thousand soul runes though. Next, we have the Whisperer task. Hard tasks for the Whisperer are the Speedrun GM and the Dark Memories GM task. The Dark Memory task requires that you kill the boss by only being the Shadow Run for less than 6 seconds. The main obstacle was the orb puzzle phase as you typically want to be inside the Shadow Run to see where the correct orbs to step on is. To complete this task. I got it. Nice. I got that one. 
Me talking is bad. Alright, hopefully that's it. Tell me. Yes, start memories. Okay, okay. Nice. Okay. Speedrun task involves natural CCB rubies into a CCB special attack and hoping for big shadow hits. You can also throw in the Void Wicker spec at the end with double vengeance on her melee attack for extra damage. This was the most difficult task of the new ones because the RNG required was not easy to achieve even if you do all these techniques. And I was not familiar with the strategy at all. Uh, well, that's a good, that's a good practice though. Wow, dude, we're so close that one. What much better? Okay, yeah, it's just RNG. I only landed one ruby that time. Yes, big hit, big hit. Oh my god, yo, yo. Let's see, let's see what this is. We got two ten. Oh my god. It was getting better every time. Like holy shit, that was really uh, early. That was literally five minutes ago when I got the two seventeen. Oh, no way. Ah, oh, damn it, dude. All right, whatever. All right, that was good practice, but whatever. I don't think I got the time, though. 218. All right, finally, I made it all the way to the end this time. But yeah, if I landed the double ruby, though, maybe, maybe I could have gotten it. After a few hours, I managed to string a decent 2x rubies into the double venge and void wake respect the boss at the very end to make the time just barely. Yeah, whatever. Oh, we got it! 203! Let's fucking go! Holy shit, I, I freaking kind of risked it though, man. I didn't I didn't think I was going to get the time, but holy shit, let's go. 203, alright. Just barely made it. Lastly, we have the Leviathan to complete all CAs again. The two hardest tasks were, of course, the GM speedrun task and the unconventional task. We had the unconventional task, which required you to keep your HP below 25, and only using Mithril ammunition to kill the boss. The ideal setup was Twisted Bow with Mithril arrows for most of the fight and Blowpipe with Mithril darts on the Enraged phase. It was chill for me because I've done over 2,000 kills for Soul Reaper Axe, so I was super comfortable with taking little damage to the Leviathan no matter how low my HP was. I just didn't have the issue with the nerves. Alright, that was really good. Thank you, Tebow. Thank you, Tebow. Oh my god, no way. I got it. Yeah, I think, I think, yeah. Hell yeah, one and done. Let's go. That was nice. Tebow is actually pretty decent. Uh, yeah, I've definitely seen people use it here. With like CZB and then Tebow switch at the end. But yeah, I think that's more for like main accounts though. But first time using Tebow like this and it's definitely pretty good. All right, all that's left is the speed run. And we're back. GM speedrun task was not too bad. It mostly just came down to Ruby RNG. You want to start with a natural Ruby into CCB spec and just hope you land some extra Ruby procs. Without CCB, you just hope for more natural Rubies. It was basically just reset until I had a good amount of Ruby procs. Another thing you can do for speedrunning here is using spellbook swap to summon thralls and use vengeance to tank a melee hit to increase your odds. It wasn't too bad for me, thankfully. Oh, my clicks are bad right now, though. All right, well, let's see what, what kind of times we got on that one. Oh, we got it. Oh, we didn't. We got the master. 110. Okay, I was a little sloppy. And also, I need more RNG. I guess the RNG needs to be a bit better. And we just got to be a, a little less sloppy. Okay, here we go. Fight me, please. Yes. Alright, I would go for it, but it's too risky. Right now, we're, we're in pretty good shape. This is uh, really good. After maybe 6 to 8 hours, I managed to finish the combat achievements again. The biggest time saves was not having to kill the Wicked bosses again. So, thank Jagex for being kind. All right, what's the time? Oh, I didn't even put on void. I got it, though. I got it, though. I didn't get the void in, but it doesn't matter. Nice. 107. Let's go. 
Shout out to the boys. Uh, anyways, as a reminder, these are the rewards. And we unlock pretty much everything because we are the Grandmaster. So the main one is uh, definitely for me right now is the Gall Wars. Just reduce KC. Also, the clue scrolls are nice. Doesn't really show here. Um, but yeah, we pretty much take advantage of all the rewards. Like, you know, two minute thralls is really good. That's probably my most used one. The Slayer Superiors better chance is pretty nice for future stuff. Anyways, let's move on to some other stuff collection log wise that I did recently. Some new quests came out that introduced some new mid level weapons. So those sounded fun to go for and fill some new slots. And also, I just got to get my quest cave back so I can do my clue scrolls nicer. The new quests were Path of Glaufrey and Defender of Rock. Funnily enough, both of these quests are basically remakes of the original quests. I remember doing them both as a kid. The rewards unlocked this time though are different. The warp creatures at the end of Path of Glaufrey can drop a really good charge staff called the Warp Scepter. They require 56 Slayer to kill. It's basically the in-between magic weapon of Ivan's staff and the Triumph of the Seas. It is stronger than Ivan's and way cheaper to cast using Chaos Runes. And it works like a trident, so there's no weird stalling when attacking monsters on first hit. Only downside, I guess, is that it's less magic XP per hit than Ibans, but that's a minor trade-off. I'm looking forward to using this item whenever I make a new account, as it'll be really nice before trident. And trident takes 87 slayer, so that shit always takes a while. Whereas 57 slayer is pretty chill. Oh, sorry, was it 56 slayer? Very quick to get. Defender of Varak came out as one of the lore quests that is needed to set up the next Grandmaster quest for old school called... While Guthix Sleep's coming out this year, the armor zombies from the new quest area have a 1 in 800 chance to drop a broken zombie axe. Fixing the zombie axe requires 70 smithing, but once you fix it, you can get yourself a really nice level 65 attack axe with high slash and crush accuracy. Other than the insane accuracy, it has also a really good strength bonus for a level 65 weapon. I recommend killing the armor zombies before finishing the quest at the moment as that area will remain instance meaning people cannot compete with you but soon enough the normal spots won't be too crowded i imagine already it's probably not too bad also i barrage them and cycle around two spots that is the fastest way to grind this axe but just killing them one by one with melee is fine as the target audience for this axe is probably mid level irons keep in mind each group of armor zombies has a ranger so there is a ranger zombie, so if you're wearing like monk robes, it's not going to be a good time. So I recommend some tanky gear if you're going to go for the melee. Oh, I got it! Yes! Broken zombie axe. Let's go. Holy shit, 1961. <laughs> Dang, it took me about four hours. But I was going pretty hard, though. I was like, barraging the crap out of these guys. But yeah, 1960 kills, basically. Okay, I can finally finish this quest, though. Holy... It's a slower weapon than something like a whip, so although its stats are higher than a whip, in most cases the whip will be better due to its faster attack speed. However, it's an amazing melee weapon before the whip, as it requires 85 slayer for irons, and it's also a crush weapon, so before hosta and bludgeon as well, it's pretty nice. You also don't have to train your slayer or fight a boss to get this weapon, so it's way easier to obtain than the other weapons I mentioned. This is a great weapon to get after the Dran Scimitar. As this weapon has that amazing accuracy, it's actually quite good at Duke and Fardorfus boss, for example, and could be good on some crush bosses like Seracnus if you don't have anything better. Overall, though, another great mid-level weapon that I'm excited to get whenever I make a new future account. As always, thanks to War Thunder for sponsoring today's video. Do not forget to take a break and check out the Epic Combat Vehicle game for free. Also, use my link to get that amazing limited time perks if you're a new player or have not played in 6 months. Like those premium vehicles, 100,000 silver lines, and 7 day premium accounts.